What's going on, guys? Tobin here with you. Thanks for checking out the channel. Just got back from the Heat Arena. And I'm guessing if you saw this, you're like, man, Tobin, you're really doing a video on Mike McDaniel at the Heat game. You're goddamn right I am because this man is he's the people's coach. All right. Like, I mean, let me just like, nobody is having a better time living their best life at being the head coach of the Dolphins than Mike McDaniel. If I can just explain. So I get a little tipsy when I get to the arena. One of my guys uh, does some work at the arena. Uh, he's around the famous people and he goes, yo, whew. Mike McDaniel's here. I get the little the, the bat signal. I go, oh. I'm going to see me some coach. Let's see what he's up to, dude. And sure enough, I walk right down there. I guess he comes right out of that tunnel. So there's like a little coach's uh, tunnel by the the uh, by the by heat bench. A lot of people walk out there. If you have good seats, you walk out there. And who's 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 chatting it up with old Chris Quinn? But McCoach and Mike McDaniel, dude, talking it up with the with uh, with old Quinny. You know, talking some shop, and it was a beautiful thing to see. He was having a good time, had his uh, his friends there. I don't know who the hell those guys are, but they look like they were having a good time too. And, you know, it, it, I just, I, I took a great, like, yes, it was stalkerish. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I was complete, uh, it was a complete, it was a complete obsession with just watching all things Mike McDaniel in the wild when he's not, he lets his hair down a little bit. What's been coaching like? What's he doing out here? What's he, what's he going to, how's he going to be enjoying it? And this dude had the time of his life. He was watching some warm-ups behind the, uh, the heat scorer's table. He was like nodding his head to the music. He was having a good time there. And then, you know, all of a sudden, heat, who were kind of mulling around, you know, not, and I was like, because I saw him, I was like, oh, where, where did my coaching go? Where did he go? And then, in the uh, like the third quarter, something like that, the McCochin search, it finally it finally concludes. We find him, and he actually was like, if I could say where I'm, I'm at, like I'm across the heat bench 100 level, below where Eric Reed and John Crotty broadcast, and I've been looking for this McCochin ever since I saw him uh, having a having a hoot of a time out there enjoying himself at the game, and. They go to him in like the at like the end of the third quarter, right? Heats down, and it's like eight point game. I think at this point, they come out of a timeout, and they show McCoachin on the jumbotron, and this dude, he was soaking it in. He was he was, you know, giving the cup. He was cupping his ear like Hulk Hogan. He was getting the crowd fired up. He was loving his life, dude. He was loving his life, Mike McDaniel, and everybody loved him for it. And then, in the midst of that afterwards, again, very obsessed with this man's personal and private time. I don't care. I missed him. I miss him. And the Heat, they come and they give him a custom jersey with his Yale number on it, dude. And you want to know what a real one this guy is, okay? Because this Will Manso, he was out there and he was like, oh, I wonder if he's a Denver fan, Colorado guy. First of all, Will Dan Will Manso, how dare you? Because when Max Struess got back-to-back -back buckets, he was clapping for Max Struess. Okay, he was loving it. Max Struess had this insane three falling out that cut it to five and then got a bucket right after that to cut it to three. McCochin was all about it, dude. But this was, I think, my favorite thing about him. He gets the custom jersey. A lot of people put it there. You know, I see how Mario Cristobal, he gets custom jersey, throws it over his shoulder, Puts it in a shopping bag. Celebrity, celebrity gets it. They put it in a shopping bag. McCochin, he wears the jersey. But tried to do a savvy move where he wore the jersey backwards. I think it was intentional. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt so people couldn't see behind him that it said McDaniel on it because, you know, he didn't want to be taking a gazillion selfies. Here's the thing, though, dude. After he was shown on the Jumbotron, the damage was done, my friend. At that point, Mike McDaniel was in selfie town and he had must have he must have taken a hundred selfies at least every, and very polite man of the people um every time play stopped he was taking like what felt like 15 to 20 selfies because everybody wanted to see McCochin. everybody was happy to see McCochin doing his McCochin thing living his mike mcdaniel life so beautiful way for him to celebrate the uh the first day the first official day of the offseason um 
And then, oh, then this was the Goosey's Galore part, dude. So go down to the uh, go down to the press conference room after the Heat lose. And for those who don't know the protocol of this, why would you? The uh, the, the coach usually, as you guys watch the broadcast, coach usually speaks first, you know? In hockey, coach speaks last. In basketball, coach speaks first, right? Well, first person to walk in, Max Struess. I'm like, oh, interesting. All right, Max Struess walking in here to do his talking. Where the hell is Spo? What's going on there? So they say, oh, locker room's open, but, you know, uh, Spo will be coming. Well, where the hell is he? Well, tell you where he was. He was chopping it up. He was talking a little, talking a little coaching shop with Mike McDaniel, dude. Two geniuses kicking some ideas around, having some coaching fun, man. It was McCoachin and Spo and Quinny and the whole crew of them. Coach, a meeting of the coaching minds, if you will. It was a beautiful thing to see. It really was. And even Spo, he walks into the press conference. He goes, "Got to be honest with you. I'd rather be talking some Dolphins football." That's what he said, dude. That is what he said. And I got to be honest with you, after that heartbreaking loss, I don't think he's wrong. But McCoachin, dude, Mike McDaniel was living his best life at the Heat game. I was enjoying watching him. It made me happy. I was it was it, it just brought a joy to me, man. The guy is uh, the guy's a real one. You know, like I was reading uh, some quotes from Barry Jackson. He took some quotes from a Raheem Mostert interview with uh, Sirius XM. And Mostert, close relationship with Mike McDaniel, talking about what's something that he does that most coaches don't. And he goes, when we had these losses, whether it was tight or we lost by three, I feel like every loss was like that. He'd go back and be like, I made the messed up call. I made a call that wasn't suitable for the offense. I'll take the blame, which is awesome because as a head coach, you don't hear too many coaches come out and be like, I made the bad call. I was part. uh, It was my part. I got to do a better job. Which I love. I love the fact that Mike McDaniel, and I think everybody can realize this based on the way. And look, yeah, we see some things he's got to get better at. Don't get me wrong. I know that he does. He's a rookie head coach. Rookie head coach who had a big task of trying to uh, harbor and turn around a young quarterback in his confidence and his performance. And had to do it with, I think, pretty big expectations with the talent that he had on the roster. And the losing streak sucked in the middle of the year. There's certainly some uh, things he's got to get better at with getting plays in. Also had a ton of different players in there at the end of the season and a rookie quarterback. So, you know, you give him a little bit of the benefit of the doubt that he's going to get better at those types of things. But I I just I, I love seeing a guy who looks like he is enjoying the fruits of having the position he is too many guys. I don't think would live that up. Would you know? A lot of coaches are sticks in the mud. The idea he got a raucous ovation when they put him on on the screen. He gave the people what they wanted. A little bit of fun ski, and I love it. I love the fact that he got to have that day here in the first day of the NFL off season after a Super Bowl that had the Chiefs on top. But uh, uh man, what a delight it was watching Mike McDaniel. 